Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I'm very excited to bring you guys this one. This is my Trauma Stacking Frost Blades Pathfinder. Uh, you can see some footage here. This this is uh, Uber Exarch Ball Phase, and this is uh, standing still in the middle of uh, Elder Slayer's Invitation. Uh, this build is very, very tanky, and it has uh, decent enough damage uh, to do Ubers. Uh, so let's get into the build guide. So disclaimer real quick. Uh, this build was made in 322 Total League, and it's completely dependent on tattoos to function. So if you're watching this video after 322 and tattoos are not core, uh, this build probably will not work. Uh, definitely not at the way it's shown in this video. Uh, so keep that in mind. So what we're going to cover, we're going to do a bossing showcase, mapping showcase, and then I'm going to explain the defensive layers of the build and how it works, and then go over the passive tree, ascendancy, the gear, the gems, and then talk about trauma, attributes, resists, hit capping, and some other important stuff. Uh, so let's get into it. So for a bossing showcase, I'm going to show you uh, Uber Uber Elder here. I'm not going to play the whole video, but I'll just show you a big, some big parts of it. The build can tank pretty much everything in the Uber Uber Elder fight. The balls probably would kill you if you stood still uh, like way too long in them. Uh, but you can tank the beams, you can tank the, the purple balls, you can tank pretty much everything in the fight. Uh, and uh, I'll try to find a spot where I'm standing in the beam. Uh, there's some more balls to the face. Uh, and the damage uh, is good enough to do ubers. Uh, let's see some damage here. So here's uber shaper damage. You can see he's... It's, the damage doesn't melt the ubers, but it's it's good enough to do them. You need to ramp the trauma up, and uh, that can be challenging on ubers. Uh, but there's there's shaper getting phased, so you can see the damage is, is fair. And uh, this, did this whole fight. There's some beam to the face, standing in the middle of the D-Gen puddle. Uh, yeah, that's about that's about good enough for the Uber Elder. And then uh, I'll show you a clip from Uber Cortex here. So here's uh, Uber Cortex. You can see in this phase, uh, there's so much going on in this fight. You can, but you can tank it all. I was like kind of purposely trying to stand in the middle of everything and see if I would die here, but I just I couldn't I couldn't die. So, uh, yep, uber uber boss viable for sure. And here's the final phase of the. You can see the damage again there. Pretty good. Uh, 85 cortex. So very good at bossing. Uh, very very tanky at bossing. And uh, here's a mapping showcase I'll show you. This is going to be a tier 16 dunes uh, Alcan go map here. And uh, I'll let I'll let this play uh, a good chunk of it. It's a, a two minute two and a half minute map clear here. Uh, I tried to make this kind of as realistic as a map showcase as possible. I was picking up loot. I was clicking on altars. Uh, so I'll let this play a little bit. I got a sextant altar, which is always nice. And as long as you have additional strikes and pierce, uh, the, the map clear is pretty quick. It's not quite as fast as the trickster because you can't use whirling blades and a claw. Uh, so you have, to use, you have to use leap slam. I did skip the shrines here, though. So this could have been a little faster. Uh, but you can see the build tanking the, all those on-death explosions there. Here's a real uh, beefy essence here. Uh, you can see the build just tanks it all to the face. Some of the uh, the chaos essences, like envy ones, or misery, or scorn, or whatever they are, uh, those ones can be very, very dangerous because the build is a little weaker to chaos damage than the other damage types. And here comes the boss coming up. And you can see he dies without even uh, doing his immunity phase. And then I took the uh, Meteor Altar here uh, specifically to try to showcase the tankiness of the build. You can see there the full screen clear is pretty good with uh, d plus two strikes and pierce. So here's uh, some Meteors here. Two meteors to the face, and you can see the life didn't even move there. And uh, that's about it for the map. Uh, there's one more essence there. You can see it goes down instantly. And uh, final essence here. And you can see that's uh, 43 left. That's the whole map. So there you go. That's mapping showcase. 
All right, so the defensive layers. Let's talk about the 90 res. The most important defensive layer is getting the 90% all res. And you achieve this by get uh, all these things here. First, you need melding, a minus four one. Uh, and you pretty much have to put that right here. Uh, next, you need unnatural instinct with four of these plus one max cold res tattoos. Uh, so when you have melding, uh, you only need to get one element up to high, uh, up to 90, and we do cold on this build. So unnatural instinct works with these tattoos if they're unallocated here. So you have to allocate the nodes, put the tattoos on, and then unallocate them, and then they work with unnatural instinct. So you get plus four from there, and then you use more of those tattoos inside of a warrior's call gem or jewel uh, in this spot here. Now these have to have only one node allocated next to them so you have to put them in these four exact spots here uh, but they get turned into two percent each so this is plus eight percent max uh cold res from from the warrior's call and then next you need a purity of ice this needs to be level 23 to get to five percent res okay and you can get a level 21 gem and then get a plus two aoe gems corruption on your heat shiver and uh and then get an enchant if you can but that'll be hard uh, and at level 23, you'll get 5% from period of ice. And then that period of ice, 5% will become 6% if you get 20% aura effect. Uh, and the way you get 20% aura effect is with charisma, which you're going to take anyway. And then the 10% aura effect mastery. And then you need to use two uh, aura effect tattoos here inside the warrior's call. And inside the warrior's call, they get, they get turned into 2% aura effect. And you can put them on any of the attribute nodes you want, depending on your attribute balancing, uh, but just two of them inside here. And that will get you to the 20% uh, aura effect for your last 1% uh, from period of ice. And then that will get you to 89%, all those things. And then you're going to need one more percent uh, max res, which you can get from the cold mastery here, or you can get it from a chest corruption on your lightning coil. Uh, single corrupted not double corrupted ones, but single corrupted chests are pretty cheap for a plus one res. So here's a summary again of how you get to 90 res. Melding, plus four here, plus eight here, plus five from purity of ice, plus one from aura effect, and then last plus one from the mastery or corruption. So the max res is so strong because we also get 100% fizz taken as elemental, and this includes your trauma stacks. Most of the damage you take is going to be from trauma. And you get this, you achieve this from just Lightning Coil, Dawnbreaker, and Taste of Hate. You get 50 from Lightning Coil. Uh, your Dawnbreaker needs to be 24% total Fizz taken as Ellie. And the reason it needs to be 24 is because your Taste of Hate with your Flask Effect gives you 26% Fizz taken as Cold. So that's going to leave you with 24% left that you need to get from Dawnbreaker. So it doesn't matter what the combination is of the corruption plus the uh, explicit mod, but total it needs to have 24% fizz taken as Ellie. And this will get you to 100% fizz taken as elemental. Your flasks on the build are extremely important. Uh, they pretty much have to be these exact flasks. You need a life flask, which I'll talk about later. You need taste of hate for the fizz taken as. You need progenesis, and then you need a ruby and a topaz flask with increased effect. Uh, increased effect prefix has to be there uh, because it will increase the less fire and lightning damage you take from these flasks. You can see the 20% less with all your flask effect gets turned into 46% less lightning damage taken. So that's incredibly strong. Uh, and then for your suffixes, you have one of them has to be additional Ellie res to make up for the res penalty from melding and lightning coil. The higher you get here, the better. Uh, but I would suggest you get it like at least 35. And then the other suffix can be either attack speed or crit. Uh, I think attack speed is kind of smoother overall. The 16% attack speed roll will get turned into 37% attack speed with flask effect. So that, that's very, very strong. The life flask. Uh, the survival of this build is entirely dependent on the life flask uh, because of Master Surgeon making it stay on all the time. You can get up to about 5,600 life per second uh, with this flask. And you have to get this specific prefix, increased life recovered with removes life from mana. Uh, this is the best c 
consistent life per second prefix there is. The rest of them either have less recovery per second or they make the duration too short to keep it up all the time. Uh, the life recovery from your flask is enhanced a lot by these tattoos here, life recovery from flask tattoos. You can slap these on all your dex nodes, uh, a lot of your dex nodes. I would suggest you probably get about 10 of these at least, if not more. Uh, and then your life recovery is also enhanced by this other tattoo, Ancestral Tattoo of Bloodlines. You put this inside of Warrior's Call here, and it uh, goes from 2 to 4% increased recovery per different tribe tattoo you have. So because of this, you want to use a bunch of different tribe tattoos, uh, which you're already going to be using a bunch of them from what you need already. Uh, from Avoid Stun, you'll use the Tesalio Tide Shifter one. You use the Cold Res tattoos. You use the Life Recovery tattoos that I talked about already. And then you probably want to use a Skill Effect Duration tattoo for Hinakora, a Lightning Resist tattoo for Valico, which you're going to need Lightning Resist anyway to make up the Lightning Coil penalty, and then a Ramako one for Suppression. And then any more you can fit in will just increase your recovery depending on your attribute balancing. Flask Effect is mandatory and it's the most important stat on the build because it decreases the damage you take from Trauma and lets you ramp it up higher. It also gets you to freeze and chill and stun immunity and trivializes your resist capping and gives damage. So the flask effect comes from this wheel on the tree plus this wheel on the tree and then these two small nodes on the tree also. And then the rest of it comes from the belt. Uh, you need flask effect on the belt plus alchemist genius on the belt. Uh, and then the rest of it comes from this one tattoo here. So this Tawoa Makanga tattoo gives you flask effect, but you have to have seven passives allocated next to it. So this spot on the tree right here is the best place for it, in between the Mark Mastery and the Leech wheel here. Uh, and then you only have to put one extra point right here to make this work, uh, because the rest of these you're going to be taking anyway. Uh, so this is this is mandatory. If you don't have this flask effect, you're not going to have enough flask effect to reach ailment immunity and uh, stun immunity. So for ailments, to get freeze and chill immunity, which is the most important ailment to be immune to, you need to have at least 24% on your boot uh, explicit mod, and then 23% on the implicit, uh, which will be 47 total. And then Taste of Hate with your Flask Effect will, will give you the rest of it, the other 53%. And this will make you freeze and chill immune. Master Alchemist can remove the other ailments whenever you use a Flask. Uh, and Ignites are pretty much irrelevant because of how much life recovery you have. And the rest of the ailments, you're tanky enough to just ignore anyway. But freeze and chill immunity is mandatory, and this is how you get it. For Stun Immunity, the Life Flask suffix gives you 89% chance to avoid stun with flask effect so you will need one more tesalio tide shifter tattoo to make up the difference here and get to 100 percent stun immunity the rest of the defensive layers on the build you get fortify from the paw tattoo which you need to put down here on the lower part of the tree uh, you get 46 block from dawnbreaker uh, you get almost 90 percent about 90 percent suppression with the lucky mastery uh, you can only get suppression on gloves and boots though because the rest of the items are all uniques uh, and then the inveterate uh, wheel plus one tattoo uh, 90 percent suppression is pretty solid and then you have about a thousand life on hit and leech uh, recovery in addition to all the flash recovery that you have uh, and then immortal call capped chaos resist and the lunaris pantheon gives you another six percent reduced le damage taken if you've been hit recently uh, which is always because of trauma. So very, very strong defensive layers on this build. All right, here's the passive tree. This is the whole tree here. Uh, the only thing that's really optional on the tree is the skill effect duration nodes here. Uh, if you don't want to take those, you could take the cold mastery here, plus like this Ellie damage here instead. Uh, but there's not very much flexibility on this tree because you need pretty much everything on this tree for uh, getting 90 res, the flask effect, recovery, accuracy, leech, mana reservation, or effect, cold conversion, suppression. Uh, yeah, you, you need pretty much everything here. Uh, so there's uh, very little flexibility here. For the ascendancy, uh, you take these four nodes here. These two nodes give you tons of flask uptime, 100% uptime. This one gives you tons of flask effect. And then Master Surgeon gives you all your life recovery from your flask. All right, let's talk about the gear. Use a bunch of uniques, Lightning Coil, Heat Shiver, Yoke. Uh, taming is a very strong ring choice, but it's uh, not required. 
uh, Dawnbreaker, and then Taste of Hate Progenesis. And then for the jewels, you use Warrior's Call, Unnatural Instinct, and Melding for the res. And then Lethal Pride is also extremely strong. And then Rational Doctrine is also extremely strong, but optional. Uh, if you use this, you have to balance your attributes, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. For the axe, uh, you want... Penetration is the strongest prefix on axe, okay? But it's hard to get. It's hard to craft. Uh, a little harder to craft, but Fizz, Fizz, Cold prefixes are also very good. Uh, and then for suffixes, you want attack speed, crit, uh, are mandatory, and then either crit multi or double damage. Uh, and here's how you can craft this axe, like, relatively easily, depending on what, what prefixes you get. For gloves, you definitely want two additional strikes and pierce. Uh, and then you need attack speed, suppression, uh, and then I think unveiled elemental damage is the strongest prefix, or uh, strongest last suffix, I mean. And then for prefixes, you just basically want life and then damage during flask effect. And here's how you can craft those. Boots, you need avoid ailments and suppression and intelligence for the suffixes. And you will need the intelligence if you plan on using rational doctrine, otherwise you won't have enough. Uh, and then prefixes need to be life and movement speed with onslaught. And then get brittle for the implicit to help you with crit. And then avoid ailments is mandatory also. And here's how you can craft those. The belt, you need to have Flask Effect and Alchemist Genius here, like, as a minimum. You're probably going to need Strength, too. And then uh, Life, if you can get it. And then your last prefix, you can just Redeemer Slam and hope that you get Cold Damage, uh, and not Evasion, uh, like I got. Uh, and then for your Attribute Balancing, using Attribute Catalysts is the easiest way to do it. So just uh, adjust your Attribute Catalysts until your Strength is exactly the same as what your Int is. You will need similar tiers, uh, but once you have the correct tier, like a, you get the correct tier of Int from the Boots, and then you adjust your Strength to match your Int is the easiest way to do it. For the last ring, this is pretty much for Chaos Resist and Int. Uh, this is how you cap your Chaos Resist here on this ring. Uh, and then... After you get the Int, you can get Lightning Resist if you still need it, depending on what kind of flask you get. Uh, or you can get more Dexterity for more tattoos. And then for the prefixes, get Life uh, and Damage. Just whatever Life and Damage you can get, if you can get it. And here's how you can craft a ring kind of like this. Abyss Jewel, Attack Speed if crit recently is the best mod. And then on top of that, just get Life, Multi, Damage, Blind, or whatever you can get really. Here's all the skill gems. I'm not going to read all these, but you can pause the video and read if you want to. Uh, they pretty much are all mandatory except for Frost Bomb. This one's kind of optional. You can use a Golem instead yeah, if you want. Uh, the most important alt quality gem is Divergent Trauma for attack speed per trauma stack. Uh, and then Divergent Frost Blades is also very strong for freeze duration uh, because the build it does need freeze duration help, especially on Ubers. And then Phantasmal Ancestor Protector is also incredibly strong for the attack speed. Trauma gives you a stacking buff, which gives you flat physical damage that also damages you every time you gain a stack. Uh, the build's damage is almost entirely reliant on having high stacks of Trauma to Freeze and Proc Trinity and Heat Shiver. So at 5 stacks, you'll have this much damage, and then uh, once you get to 70 stacks, you'll have an insane like 700 to 1600 flat Fizz damage. So... Trauma stacks is all the damage on the build. Attributes, if you intend to use Rational Doctrine, which is extremely strong because it gives you 10% crit, basically, from profane, profane Ground, you need to balance your Strength and Int, and they both need to be higher than your Dexterity. Now, this can be a little tight, but it can be done fairly easily just by tattooing down your Dexterity uh, and then getting Strength and Int on your gear. Uh, you have to have at least 159 Strength for Dawnbreaker, uh, so they both need to be above that. Uh, and then, like I said, with the belt, just use your attribute catalyst to make your strength and int the same. Resist capping comes almost entirely from the flask, the flask suffix. Uh, but if you don't get a quite high enough one, a uh, high enough roll, you might need to get lightning resist uh, on one more piece of gear. Uh, also, depending on your yoke, you need to have a nice high lightning resist roll on the yoke to... Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be capped, uh, except for you might not be capped without Alchemist Genius up, which I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then Chaos Resist, you get all from a ring uh, plus Progenesis. Hit capping, you can hit cap with just the crit accuracy wheel here. You don't need a mastery. Uh, level 20 precision, 
the Feller of Foes notable down here. The accuracy you get from the Unnatural Instinct attack speed nodes. And then Blind, uh, which you can get from tattoos if you aren't able to get it on your weapon. Uh, and this is enough to hit cap you. Here's the budget breakdown. The most expensive thing on the build is Progenesis by far. Uh, and then the Cold Resist tattoos. You need eight of these tattoos. Uh, they are mandatory. So that's they're 3.3 divines each right now. Hopefully they don't go up. Uh, and then Rational Doctrine is 20 divines. So I would say I spent around 120 to 130 divines on my setup. Uh, this It could be done for maybe a little bit cheaper depending on how experienced you are at crafting. Uh, but it is going to be kind of expensive to set up because of just how expensive some of these mandatory pieces are. Uh, so here's the big uh, breakdown of the budget. Trinity is very, very important uh, on the build. And it, it will be up all the time. Uh, except for on Ubers is the only time you're going to have to uh, care about it proccing. Uh, so you need to hit ailment thresholds uh, to freeze. And on Ubers, you're probably going to need to use southbound to freeze reliably or even at all. Uh, you're not going to have the damage to freeze until you get to like probably 25 stacks of trauma with southbound. Uh, if you don't use southbound, you're going to need to get to like 70 stacks of trauma. So here's a breakdown here. Uber Shapers ailment threshold is 7.4 million. Uh, so without southbound, you need to have like 70 stacks of trauma to get up to that level, uh, which is not easy to get to. Uh, if you do use southbound, though, you can get there with about 25 stacks or so. Uh, so it, it, it is much easier to freeze and much more consistent damage with southbound on Ubers. Uh, outside of Ubers, you don't really need to use it. The build uses an axe because trauma doesn't work with claws, so you don't get to use Nightblade. Uh, and so you use crit damage support instead of Nightblade, which kind of makes up for a, a good chunk of the crit multi that you get from Elusive Nightblade on the Claw version. Uh, but Axe is a strong choice for, for trauma. Uh, you get lots of accuracy, crit, uh, and you can get Rage from the Axe Mastery uh, for lots of speed and quality of life while mapping. And uh, Axes are pretty off meta, so hopefully you can get a decent base for cheap. Some other important stuff about the build. Alchemist Genius is a four second buff that you get every time you use a flask. Uh, and it gives you flask effect. So this flask effect will be required to get you to stun and freeze and chill cap. And your chaos resist cap and possibly your lightning resist cap too depending on your uh, resist flask suffix. Uh, so just keep this in mind. It is possible for this buff to fall off if you don't use your life flask uh, often enough. There could be some overlap. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you put on the reused when charge is full... Uh, orbs on your flask, they will just continuously go off by themselves and they will stay up 100% of the time. Uh, but there could be some overlap between usage here, so keep that in mind. Uh, note about the flask mod, life flask mod, that removes life uh, from mana uh, on the life flask. This will drain your mana down to zero whenever you turn on the flask, and you have to do that every four or five seconds. So if you're not leeching when you, when you press it, so if you're not actively attacking something, uh, you might find this clunky because you're not going to be able to frost blink uh, or attack. If you are attacking something and you're leeching, then you won't even notice it and it's fine. Uh, but the 30% life cost as mana mastery here might uh, make the build feel a little smoother. It's up to you if you want to take this. Ancestral totems are more important than ever on this build, uh, especially the Ancestor Protector one for speed. If you get the Phantasmal Gem plus the Helm Enchant plus Panopticon, this totem gives you 64% more attack speed, which is just absurd. So you need to have this down for sure whenever you're doing single targets to get your trauma stacks up quickly. Immortal Call. This buff has a very, very short uptime uh, because you don't have endurance charges to make it last longer. Uh, and you can't really rely on castle damage taken because of trauma and socket pressure. Uh, so keep in, keep in mind this duration here. If you're going to self-cast this, uh, like when bossing... You want to time it very, very carefully for certain slams or other things. But this build can mostly tank everything in the game, even without Immortal Call. What about increased duration support? So this support will allow you to ramp your trauma up to like 100 plus. Uh, but you will kill yourself if you get up to about 90 to 100 stacks or so. You will start to kill yourself. The self-damage from trauma becomes too much. Uh, divergent increased duration... Uh, it has freeze duration as the alt quality, and that can help you freeze uh, if you're struggling to do that. 
and the higher trauma does give you very nice consistent damage but i've found that just using the skill effect duration wheel on the tree is a better way to keep consistent high trauma and it also allows you to use uh, awakened elemental damage with attacks uh, so you can use increased duration but just keep in mind if you're fighting anything that lets you ramp your trauma up you will kill yourself with it petrified blood you'll be even tankier if you use petrified blood uh, but you do have to lose a lot for it. You'll, you won't be able to use Herald of Ice, which is very strong for clear speed. Uh, and you'll have to lower your precision level because Petrified Blood costs more mana than Herald of Ice does. And that will probably require you to get another accuracy suffix somewhere to hit cap. And you will effectively lose all your leech, life on hit, and uh, regen from Consecrated Ground uh, with Petrified Blood. Because all that recovery gets turned off above low life, except for your flask. Uh, Progenesis is the much stronger like stagger mechanic uh, compared to Petrified Blood anyway, so I just recommend you just use Progenesis. Trauma in POB. Trauma in POB can show you the maximum stacks you could like theoretically get to uh, with a perfect uptime, but you will never reach this number here uh, in reality. And this, this number does, doesn't factor whether you can actually survive to get to that number either. Uh, so you also will kill yourself before you get to this number. But in POB, you can look right here to see uh, how much trauma you can theoretically get to. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this number is kind of irrelevant because you will, like I said, you will never be able to get to it. Uh, this build is not a league starter uh, for obvious reasons. Tattoos might not even exist next league, and you can't really use trauma while you're leveling. So I recommend if you're going to play this, you level with Hollow Palm and then respec maybe around level 70 or so. Uh, you can level with a bow or anything else you want also because you don't have to respect no matter what you do. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for this one. Uh, I tried to cover it as best as I could. I might have forgot some stuff. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment in the description. I'll uh, link the POB there. And uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, that's it for this one. See ya.